If you haven't heard about the Medici family, get ready. Because the stories about this family are truly remarkable. One of the most powerful families throughout history. In power for 300 years, proclaimed Grand Dukes of Tuscany and with influences bigger than you can imagine. The Medici family also referred to as the House of Medici. Willy came into the light with Cosimo di Medici, also called Cosimo the Elder, who in 1397 founded the Medici Bank in Florence. This was the beginning of a family dynasty that would last 300 years. The bank would go on to be the largest and most respected bank in Europe during its prime in the 15th century. The bank was the prime mover for the facilitation of the Medici's rise to power. The Medici Bank pioneered the structure of bank branches and something that assembles a holding company. For the next two decades, the bank opened branches in Rome, Venice, Geneva and for a time in Naples. The bank continued to expand and would later open offices in London, Pisa, Avignon, Bruges, Milan and Lübeck. One of their clients at the time was the Catholic Church, which as you can imagine is a good player to have in your corner, but also a very profitable one, as they had the right to collect taxes from the Vatican. With this, they built a close connection to the papacy. While the Medicis came into power and notoriety through banking, there is one thing that is certainly more well known about this time period, the Renaissance. The Medicis are by some called the godfathers of the Renaissance. The family had an enormous impact on the arts at the time, having the resources they did. They chose to become patrons of artists, scientists and philosophers. You might have heard of some of the people they supported. Sandro Botticelli, Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, Donatello and Raphael, just to name a few. I guess they were big fans of the Ninja Turtles as well. As I stated earlier, they also supported science and the most famous scientist they funded was Galileo the Italian astronomer, physicist and engineer. He was even the private tutor for some of the Medici children. Michelangelo, the artist behind the Sistine Chapel, Pieta, the David sculpture and so much more, was apprenticed with the family at the age of 13. Lorenzo de' Medici, also known as Lorenzo the Magnificent, the grandson of Cosimo, took a liking to Michelangelo and quickly moved him into the Medici palace and was essentially raised by Lorenzo as his own son. Lorenzo truly gave Michelangelo the absolute best conditions to succeed. He had an understanding of artists that he wired differently temperamentally and couldn't thrive on the normal conditions. He surrounded Michelangelo with the best philosophers, artists, poets and writers and funded him so he could focus on his craft. Lorenzo was one of the world's greatest patrons of art but also in his political life. He had a huge impact when he negotiated a balance of power that brought peace to Italy for 50 years, allowing the Renaissance to flourish. In 1532, Pope Clement VII, who was born with a different name, you guessed it, Giulio di Medici, appointed Alessandro di Medici as Duke of Florence, which essentially began the official power of Florence for around 300 years. As you can imagine, the family had extremely strong connections, which is probably also why they had the papacy not only once, but the Medicis produced four popes. One of them was not so lucky though. Pope Leo XI died only 27 days after his coronation, making his papacy the shortest one in history. So you would think that we have been around the most significant stories of the House of Medici, but besides producing four popes, they also produced two queens of France, one of them, Catherine de' Medici, who was married off to Henry de Valois, who became the king of France in 1547. At one point, she was considered the most powerful woman in Europe in the 16th century. She was the mother of three kings as well. Another very noteworthy story is about Giulio de' Medici, who got a black slave working in the home pregnant. The child was named Alessandro, but was also called the Moor due to his dark skin. His father, who became the Pope, named him the first Duke of Florence in 1530, until his death in 1537, when he was assassinated by his cousin, Lorenzino de' Medici. Alessandro was Western Europe's first black leader. Any family with this much power and reputation, of course, came with dangers from other families or just the regular citizens at the time. 
For protection, Cosimo de' Medici ordered Giorgio Vasari to construct a not-so-secret passage connecting the palaces, garden and the office the Uffizi, today known as the Uffizi Gallery, a famous museum in Florence. This protected the family from the open sewers in the streets, angry town folks or other invaders. While the passage is visible from the streets and not so secret, they did have secret pathways, doors and rooms. In the Palazzo Vecchio, in the Hall of Geographical Maps, there's a secret door behind a painting of a map of Armenia that leads to a secret room. It was used to bring lovers for intimacy, but also to torture their enemies. It even leads to a stairway with a small opening where corpses could conveniently be dumped in the river. The Studiolo of Francisco I was a secret refuge and private museum of the one-time Duke of Tuscany, once again created by Giorgio Vasari along with some of his scholars. This room is often considered to be one of the first and finest rooms of curiosities. The room was decorated with masterpieces of art and behind every painting is a small cabinet that was filled with treasures and curiosities of the Medici's. It is said that Francisco wanted to surround himself with the things he loved. Another secret pathway was ordered to be built in the Palazzo Vecchio, adding some secret stairs that went from his room to Via de la Nina. He wanted it for emergencies as an escape plan, and it actually saved his life in 1343 when the citizens tried to kill him. Some of the secret passages and escape routes are even depicted in Dan Brown's Inferno, where Robert Langdon escapes through those passages. Before I end the video, I just want to mention three other noteworthy stories about the Medici's. They supposedly built the first public library in Europe, ordered by Cosimo de' Medici in 1444 in Florence. Catherine de' Medici is credited with introducing the world to ballet when she married the French king Henry II. She introduced early dance styles into the court life in France. And the final, in 1589, the Medici family commissioned Florentine Camarata to produce what is considered the very first opera in history. So just to do a quick recap, the House of Medici produced four popes, two queens and was in power for 300 years, had for a time the most powerful bank in the world, introduced the world to ballet and opera, built the first public library in Europe, commissioned some of the greatest minds in history, including Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, Galileo and so many more, produced the first black leader in Western Europe and were the godfathers of the Renaissance. Cried the resume. But of course it wasn't all perfect and ideal. There were countless murders, fighting with other families, religious fundamentalists, the family was exiled from the city multiple times. The story of course is not this simple, but I chose to focus on some of the more positive sides and stories of the Medici's. Just know that that's not the whole story. And I'm really sorry if I'm pronouncing anything wrong, I tried my best. There are links to my sources in the description. I'm not a historian, so if I said something incorrect, feel free to write in the comments so we can get it right. I hope you learned something, or at least felt entertained for a while. Consider subscribing, and thanks so much for watching.